besides just the amount of hormone being released into the blood, we also have uh, another means of regulating the actions of the endocrine system and the hormones it releases. Um, so if you were to look at just hormone concentration in the blood, it's oftentimes a poor indicator of the actual hormone activity. And the reason for this is the hormones have to bind to a receptor and the number of receptors can change. So the number of receptors on a cell. Remember, not every cell has every receptor for every type of hormone. Um, when there is a receptor on a cell, there's typically between 2,000 and 10,000 receptors for that hormone on that cell. So just to give you some numbers here. Um, we can up and down regulate this. Down regulation is a decrease in the number of receptors causing a desensitization of that cell to that type of hormone. Think whenever someone develops type 2 diabetes, when they become insulin resistant, the body is constantly flooding the bloodstream with insulin in order to put glucose inside the cells and when that happens to uh, an excessive degree the body's cells be start to pull back on its insulin receptors which means you become insulin resistant we are desensitizing or down regulating our insulin receptors in that situation we can also up regulate our receptor number which means increasing the receptors on a cell causing an increased sensitization of that cell to the hormone we're talking about. In this case, it's oftentimes when there's a small amount of the hormone present in the cells need that hormone, they will increase the amount of hormone receptors that they have. Um, this is going to increase the action of the hormone. So if we look over here at this diagram, there are four quadrants in this diagram, and we have different amounts of hormone activity uh, present based on the, the situation of each quadrant. So we look at this upper left quadrant here, we have a low response or so low hormone activity. That's because we have a low amount of circulating hormone. We also have a, only a handful of receptors for that hormone. So small circulating hormone, hormone, small number of receptors, they're definitely going to get a small hormone activity, a hormone response. If we increase the amount of hormone floating in the bloodstream, but we don't increase the number of receptors, we're going to get a more moderate response. This is because these hormone receptors are pretty much always going to be bound to hormone or have hormone bound to them. As soon as the hormone is broken down, another molecule of that hormone is ready to go and jump in that spot. So you're going to get a more moderate response when this happens. The opposite way we can get a moderate response is if we have a high amount of hormone receptor, but not a ton of the hormone floating around in the bloodstream. So each receptor isn't always going to be bound to hormone, but the hormones floating around are going to be very easily able to find a receptor, so they are typically always going to be bound to a receptor. Again, you get a moderate response or moderate amount of hormone activity in this situation. In order to get a high amount of hormone activity, you want a lot of hormone floating around the bloodstream and a high number of receptors on the cells. This is going to mean you're going to get a maximum amount of hormone binding to receptors at any one point in time and a maximum amount of that hormone's activity. Again, this shows how it's not just the amount of hormone in the bloodstream, but also the number of receptors that are going to affect the hormone activity. So both of these are necessary in order to get high response, and either one of these, if they are low, is going to cause a lower response. Remember, the job of the endocrine system is to maintain homeostasis of the internal environment of the body. It does this at rest, and it also does this during exercise. In another video, I'm going to be describing how continuous aerobic exercise is going to lead to a massive increase in a lot of different hormones in the body, and this is these hormones are going to then support the exercise session, allowing us to exercise at a high intensity or a moderate intensity even for a long duration period of time.